Peter Claver, the son of a Catalonian farmer, was born at Verdu in 1581. He obtained his first degrees at the University of Barcelona and at the age of 20 he entered the Jesuit novitiate at Tarragona. While he was studying philosophy at Majorca in 1605, Alphonsus Rodriguez, the saintly doorkeeper of the college, learned from God the future mission of his young associate, and thenceforth never ceased exhorting him to set out to evangelize the Spanish possessions in America. Peter obeyed, and in 1610 landed at Cartagena, where for 44 years he was the apostle of the Negro slaves. Early in the 17th century the masters of Central and South America afforded the spectacle of one of those social crimes which are entered upon so lightly. They needed laborers to cultivate the soil which they had conquered and to exploit the gold mines. The natives being physically incapable of enduring the labors of the mines, it was determined to replace them with Negroes brought from Africa. The coasts of Guinea, the Congo, and Angola became the market for slave dealers, to whom native kings sold their subjects and their prisoners. By its position in the Caribbean Sea, Cartagena became the chief slave mart of the New World. A thousand slaves landed there each month. They were bought for two, and sold for two hundred écus. Though half the cargo might die, the trade remained profitable. Neither the repeated censures of the Pope, nor those of Catholic moralists could prevail against this cupidity. The missionaries could not suppress slavery, but only alleviate it, and no one worked more heroically than Peter Claver. Trained in the school of Per Alfonso de Sandoval, a wonderful missionary. Peter declared himself the slave of the Negroes forever, and thenceforth his life was one that confounds egotism by its superhuman charity. Every month when the arrival of the Negroes was signaled, Claver went out to meet them on the pilot's boat, carrying food and delicacies. The Negroes, cooped up in the hold, arrived crazed and brutalized by suffering and fear. Claver went to each, cared for him, and showed him kindness, and made him understand that henceforth he was his defender and father. He thus won their good will. To instruct so many speaking different dialects, Claver assembled at Cartagena a group of interpreters of various nationalities, of whom he made catechists. While the slaves were penned up at Cartagena waiting to be purchased and dispersed, Claver instructed and baptized them in the faith. On Sundays during Lent he assembled them, inquired concerning their needs, and defended them against their oppressors. This work caused Claver severe trials, and the slave merchants were not his only enemies. The apostle was accused of indiscreet zeal, and of having profaned the sacraments by giving them to creatures who scarcely possessed a soul. Fashionable women of Cartagena refused to enter the churches where Father Claver assembled his negroes. Nevertheless, Claver continued his heroic career, accepting all humiliations and adding rigorous penances to his works of charity. Lacking the support of men, the strength of God was given him. He became the prophet and miracle worker of New Granada, the oracle of Cartagena, and all were convinced that often God would not have spared the city save for him. During his life he baptized and instructed in the faith more than 300,000 Negroes. He was beatified on the 16th of July, 1850 by Pius IX, and canonized on the 15th of January, 1888 by Leo XIII. His feast is celebrated on the 9th of September. On July 7, 1896, he was proclaimed the special patron of all the Catholic missions among the Negroes. Alphonsus Rodriguez was canonized on the same day as Peter Claver. O oh, Saint Peter Claver, in thy life, thou was extremely zealous for the conversion and salvation of souls. And such great inconceivable zeal and charity, that during your life, not only did you accepted all humiliations, 
Thou didst too added rigorous penances to your works of charity and by the grace given to you by God, baptized and instructed in the faith more than some three hundred thousand people. Your sanctity was so great that even people were convinced that God would not have spared the city save for you. What great trust then, which we should suppose, that you have for our good God. Now then, O Saint Peter Claver, we implore thee to pray for us, miserable sinners. That we may love God above all things, but most of all to use the many gifts given to us by God so generously in his service. Obtain for us too the grace of perseverance in the doing of all good works and the courage to evangelize with the grace of God, sharing with others about the gospel of Christ in ways we could. But most of all, O Saint Peter Claver, please obtain for us the grace of humility and the grace to trust in God even more and for the end of racism in our world today. Please also remind us constantly that everyone is loved infinitely by God, no matter what race one should be. In gratitude, I desire with the help of God, to be holier every day and to increase my love for God and neighbor. God be praised forever and ever, Amen. Saint Peter Claver, please pray for us. Saint Nicholas Peak, please pray for us. Saint Michael the Archangel, please pray for us. O oh Mary, Queen of Heaven, please pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please do like this video and share this video with others. God bless you and have a great day.